Good afternoon and welcome to Perspective. I'm Monique Caradine Kitchens. People around the world were stunned by news of sexual abuse within the Catholic Church in America. Since those first reports were made public, victims from across Chicago and the nation have come forward claiming that they were abused by priests and other church leaders as children. We've heard many of those painful stories, but rarely have we heard from African American victims of that abuse. So today, we will tell some of their stories. And we'll examine allegations that black and Hispanic victims of clergy sexual abuse have been treated unfairly by the Archdiocese of Chicago. Joining me today are Executive Director Ruby Harris and volunteer Gigi Moore from the African American Advocates for Victims of Clergy Sexual Abuse. And ladies, thank you both for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so Ruby, let's start with you and have you, first of all, tell us why we have really never heard or, or seen these African-American and, and Hispanic victims of clergy sexual abuse. Why haven't we heard their stories? I believe many of the victims have been afraid to come forward. They felt embarrassed and ashamed to expose what happened to them. There's a lot of secrecy in the black community and also the Hispanic community where people just feel that no one will believe their story or feel that it's their fault, that they're to blame. And sometimes it takes a long time before they have the courage to speak sure. up. So, so really the news stories uh, came to the forefront, as I said, maybe in 2002. And I'm sure that there are probably many people out there like myself, as we have seen the victims come forward to tell their stories. We've mm -hmm. never seen African Americans and really not many Hispanics. Is that because there aren't that many of them? I don't believe that's the case. I believe that there's still a lot of shame and guilt and just the secrecy that people just don't want to come forward. I believe there are hundreds of victims who are just so embarrassed that they don't feel that anyone will believe them. And usually it takes a, f a friend or family member who was abused that will convince that person to come forward because it will help in the healing process to no longer have that secret. Hundreds of victims just here in Chicago or hundreds across the nation? Oh, I believe here in Chicago. Okay. Most of the victims that we have are victims who attended Mayor Daly's Summer Youth Employment Program in the 70s, and the priests, primarily Father Victor Stewart and Father Terrence Fitzmaurice, were involved with the CETA program. And most of the students, the, the children were like 13, 14 years old, mm -hmm. and they were hired to work at the carnival or clean the church building, work in the cafeteria, and during their employment, they were abused. So you were telling me before that you believe that there are even more African American and Hispanic victims than, than there are white. Is that true? Well, I'm not sure how many white victims there are. I just believe that there are a lot more Hispanic and African American victims who have not come forward about their abuse. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's talk a little bit about the, the, the kind of abuse that they have suffered. Really, some of the stories are heart-wrenching, and mm -hmm. we're actually going to hear from one of the uh, victims a little bit later in the program. Right. But what kind of abuse exactly are we talking here? Give, us, give me some examples. Primarily, the abuse was oral sex, anal sex, a lot of fondling, um, masturbation, and the victims were basically forced to perform those acts in exchange for clothes, food, um, just spending money or to attend college. So basically, it was sex in exchange for money. It, but they were, excuse me, the victims were, they were children, and they believed in the priest as a higher figure authority figure and they were man manipulated told that God would not you know punish them that what they were doing was right it was the right thing to do you also explain um, that some of the abuse involved exposing these children who again you say were between the ages of 10 and 14 yes they were exposed to alcohol and drugs that's correct most of the victims who were exposed to alcohol and drugs experienced the alcohol or drugs for the first time in their lives by the priest this is amazing to me. Now, you come to know these stories in a very unique way. You are not only involved in the organization that I mentioned earlier, but you also work uh, directly with an attorney that is handling um, the cases of many of the African American and Hispanic victims. Is that correct? That's correct. You tell me a little bit more about that connection and that relationship. Okay. About four years ago, I joined the firm of Philip Aaron in Seattle, the law firm. I worked, as a, I worked as a client services director, and during our work, he came across a victim in Chicago. 
he learned of the victim through his church. A member told him of a young man in Chicago who had been abused by the priest and asked Mr. Aaron would he call him and mm -hmm. try to help him. And Mr. Aaron did so and learned that the person had been abused and he pursued his case legally. Once Mr. Aaron got involved with that client, he learned of more victims and the client told other friends about you know, his contact with the attorney. So it just sort of evolved where mm -hmm. more and more people started coming forward. And, and this was how long ago? About, about four years ago, okay. the support group came about. Now, are there men and women? Yes. So we have African-American men and women, as well as Hispanic men and women, who have been victims of abuse. And again, these stories just emerging really four years ago. That's correct. And the African-American advocates for victims of clergy sexual abuse, that evolved as a result of providing a support system to the victims where we can get together and talk and sort of do the best we can to help them. Most have been totally emotionally devastated and mm -hmm. their lives have been ruined. Now, and now, Gigi, you are a volunteer and you agree that the people that you have worked with within the organization, their lives have indeed been devastated. Yeah, it has been destroyed. You know, a lot of them are alcohol abusers, substance abusers, depressed, suicidal, you know. All because of the child sexual abuse and according to research, you know, that these are some of the symptoms. Absolutely. Well, we're going to take a quick break here and when we come back, we'll continue our conversation and one of the victims will speak out here on the program. So stay with us. Perspective will return in just a moment.